Well, I am uh, thrilled to have Leela and the Damn Truth on the podcast. How are you guys doing? Very, very good. We're super excited. Tomorrow, tomorrow is release day, so tonight, less than tonight, tonight. Less than twelve hours, midnight, less than 12 hours. Uh, midnight tonight. tonight. Everything goes live. Are you going to sleep and uh, see how it is in the morning? Or are you guys staying up tonight? Probably going to sleep. I'll probably. <laughs> sleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that'll take the kids to school in the morning. Yeah, for sure. So the want to be rested up for tomorrow's party. Yeah, that's true. We that's plan. True. That's true. We do plan on being together all day tomorrow. Like do some Facebook lives and hang out and crazy. Have stuff. a good time. You should yeah. join us. Absolutely, <laughs> I will definitely check that out because I'm going to be sitting uh, around, kind of doing stuff like this. Anyhow, I, I guarantee I'll be on my computer. So, uh, oh I'll, yes, when the <laughs> notification <laughs> comes up. I'm in there. Perfect. Awesome, man. <laughs> the the single is "This Is Who We Are Now," and when when I hear that title, two th- there's two ways that you I could interpret that. It's like the band saying, "This is who we are now." Maybe it's like you've gone through something in the pandemic. This is who we are now, or it could be more of like a commentary on society, like because it's been batshit crazy for a couple of years, like and we've come through it. Like, oh, this is who we are now. Am I right with either of those? That's I think it's the best part about about this sentence is that it can be everything. It, I mean, the sentence was born in Texas in the middle of the night, long before the before COVID was even like a, a, a yeah, hint we knew about it or anyway. anything <laughs> of the sort. And uh, if Tom was driving and it came into his head, the riff, the words, the melody line, the hook, and he just said, P.Y., you know record this it's gonna be something and he just felt it you know and then during the rest of the tour it turned into our motto and we could was that malleable sentence that we could turn into anything that we needed it to be you know oh yeah we sold out the show this is who we are now guys or you know man the the promoter just ripped us off well this is who we are now you know (laughs) (laughs) so it just turned into turned into that and then we got back you know we it, it just I, I don't know, man. It's one of those sentences. That it could it could mean anything. It could mean it, anything and everything. Or negative. It can go. It can go either way. Uh, it's the, absolutely the song. Absolutely <laughs> rocks. It sounds huge. Great hooks in this song, and uh, an all star cast behind it. Some Grammy winners, including uh, the legendary producer Bob Rock. What was that like? Um, it was incredible. Obviously, it was uh, scary before we uh, jumped in the studio with them. A little intimidating, um, yeah. I could see that. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit, just, just, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But um, uh, regarding this uh, specific song, uh, the, what I can say about it is that um, there was a standout moment in the studio for me because uh, while recording the guitar solo for, for, the, for the track, um, Bob had to step out for, for like just an hour or two, and uh, he set up the tone, and it was like, "You got this, don't worry." And I recorded the. The solo with Adam, the the assistant, and um, you know we did we did the takes. I thought we got a great take and whatever. And then just magically Bob appeared at the door, and uh, Adam tells him, "Come sit, listen to what we've done." So he's you know he sat down like in front of the, the the console, and he put his head down on the console, and he played it so loud, you know, it was insanely loud. And he listened from the solo till the end of the song, and then the song finished, and he just kind of turned around in his chair and well sitting there just waiting for his reaction he's like you guys are my favorite band and i immediately started crying and well and yeah it was it was a magic moment you know and i think he really connected with the song and uh, i think we all did and the, it was definitely like working on, on this track the the feeling was that there's magic in the air for sure that's an amazing moment and i think that it probably resonates with him because i mean i mean first of all the guy's name is bob rock all right and then <laughs> you look at his his resume and the the amazing the classic albums that he has been ha- behind and uh, like like true rock and roll too and with that's the spirit of the damn truth so i see why that resonates with him but that's got to be so cool to hear that from from him it's crazy. man i felt bare naked in that moment i just i was a fucking baby again <laughs> <laughs> so uh the, the album is now or or nowhere and uh, we've we've got a taste with this is who we are now. Um, what's what's the rest of the album like? Where are you guys taking us on this one? Well, I mean, uh, I think we uh, kind of made this 
conscious decision after after traveling and touring and meeting so many incredible people from all walks of life throughout our tours and feeling this connection with with the people with the community for us it's more than just like playing the show it's hanging out afterwards and like that's that's the the real essence of of the tour right to get to talk to people and meet people and and feel like you're really really connecting on on a on this incredible uh rock and roll love love basis and and it, it just sort of like we we all you know uh vibed with the idea that that this is, we're, we're all connected and we all need love we all need hope we all need to feel that that community vibe and we need positivity in our lives we need to inject that and that was really really the goal of of, of this album you know before we did a lot you know it seems like when we listen back and i listen to my voice in the last couple of records and there's a lot of finger pointing there's a lot of bashing of society and like feeling like crappy uh, and just being utterly depressed at like this is the world i'm bringing my kid into and all this stuff like i was really sure. really um it was it was very like a very hard and a very dark time and i think it, in a way like this album was like a therapy to get myself out of that and to just like no no we need to we need to to, to rotate it to a different level you know we need to get to a place where we're we're positive and we're hopeful and and that should be what we're spreading you know i think that i think a part of like uh the new age of rebellion is that we're so surrounded right now with so much negativity from everywhere you go on the internet you're bombarded with like different polarizing opinions about politics and and uh racism and You know all that crap and, and you're, you're we're so much more bombarded than that than ever before that the real rebellion here is love you know if you I don't want to be a part of that crap I want to be a part of the, the solution you know I want to be a part of the new movement of rock and roll which is bringing the, everybody together and creating hope and love and that's what's so powerful about the statement this is who we are now because it really unites us all yeah and I think that at its core is what rock and roll is about I mean you Sure, it can get crazy and dangerous and and there's some some other places that rock and roll is legendary for but I mean at its roots it's it's about bringing people together um, absolutely and there's there's a, a handful of of genuine bands that I find that are just that in the same vein bands like you know uh, rival sons and uh, the crown lands like rock and roll bands that need to be experienced live and you guys are one of those bands so I know you've got a live stream coming up that's been you Uh, the outlet that uh, that people have had so um, I mean how how much are you looking forward to to getting back to that face-to-face with a crowd in a sweaty bar or in a field or whatever more than anything man yeah. <laughs> yeah. more Honestly. than anything it's uh, it's something that you can't replicate you know I mean uh, very very excited to, to get on the road again and to be able to tour again and I mean the live stream is going to be amazing it'll be we've called it our uh, live stream ex- experiment because uh, <laughs> the first <laughs> it's the first we've done you know we've never done it and it's definitely gonna be an experiment we're gonna I mean I, I know that it's going to be amazing because we're going to be able to play these songs for the first time you know and, and record them and know that people are there you know with us even though we can't feel them we know that they're there yeah so it's it's, it's gonna be intense it's gonna be great um yeah The yeah, room is going to yeah. be so cool. Secret room. <laughs> oh, it's a secret room that you guys are playing at. For now. For now. Okay. <laughs> so, starting now. Well, because <laughs> it, it, it's got to be strange if you're doing it in a venue that's like suited for a thousand people or something like that. And you're, you're playing a full on show. It's, it's not rehearsal. This is a show, but it's, it doesn't feel that way. It's got to be very odd. to do that we'll see it's gonna well, be yeah, an experiment we will find, <laughs> out. We will find <laughs> out ask me uh, on June 10 <laughs> but I tell you we, um, last year in the summer of 2020 we were um, definitely one of the first bands in Canada to be asked to do a, a right. drive-in show yeah you know? and I mean I what an honor right like it was basically like the Oceaga Festival in, you know of Canada and we were the only band playing we had two shows back to back um, And it was insane and it was intense and like I'm super grateful that we got to uh, to do these shows like what other band can say like we played two shows uh, back to back in the summer of 2020 but it was strange you know playing to a bunch of cars you know yeah. um, There, some of that happened in Ottawa here there was a spot like some nights they were showing like movies and then I think there was a couple bands yeah. big wreck may have played and I thought yeah. like like man if you've got a, a pickup truck or one of those 
like giant sunroofs that's like the entire roof of the vehicle and you can kind of like you know pop up and and still be outdoors but in your vehicle i mean that would kind of work but sitting like watching it through a windshield to me is just yeah. i mean you'll in take Quebec, what you can you were get allowed to get out of your car yeah, yeah. it was Quebec, a little bit different we yes were, okay yeah, you have a perimeter the cars yeah. were distanced and people had like they yeah. had their spot you know yeah. like their campgrounds and so they lawn just, chairs and yeah or even just rocking out standing outside their their car outside their vehicle and hanging out last last summer fun. i i went to and i had him on the podcast too there's a guy in uh, out by kingston and he he's been doing a, a small rock festival called voodoo rock fest and okay. yeah we played it twice you've okay you guys have played voodoo perfect well, he did it on his, he's moved it to his property now. And it's, okay. so he's got 25 acres, but last summer, like the rule was a hundred people if you're outdoors. So it was like hugely distanced. Um, and there, there was food trucks and everything. So it was like a little taste of that, you know, yeah, festival. Diluted. Yeah. Yeah. But, festival. It's awesome. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. To, to see a band playing and have a, a beer in your hand in the field was, uh, was just nice. Uh. I'm yeah. salivating right yeah. now. Yeah, right? I really want that. I know, <laughs> I know. I didn't want it to, this is what the podcast turns into sometimes. Like, wouldn't it be great if we could all do this together and let's see yeah. Yeah. Uh, new stuff live? That would be fun. We're getting there, you know? Soon, <laughs> um, soon. Soon, for sure. Okay, so I noticed something else that I found really interesting is that I looked at your Instagram today and we do something very similar on Instagram. We both follow the same number of people. Oh, whoa. <laughs> it's the magic number, no? It is the magic number. I guess it's the, the number of the beast. But I was hovering <laughs> around that number anyhow. So I'm like, well, if I'm if I'm in the neighborhood, it's very easy to to maintain it. Um, and you guys have obviously intentionally. Did you did you decide to do it in the same way? Uh, not really. We just kind of go with the flow. And uh, whatever happens is usually magical, like this moment. <laughs> so I just you caught know. it. Like, yeah, just gotta lightning. let the universe just float you through. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because it's not people who follow; it's who you choose to follow. So you control yeah. that number. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, for sure. You you know you shed the people who aren't interactive, of course. Yeah, every time I follow someone new, it's like, okay, who do I have to who do I have to get rid of to <laughs> to keep the six 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 going here on Instagram? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I've shared a couple times, you know. Every time we go on, and be like, nah, and I go back, but it's not intentional. I actually had even forgotten. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, do you guys like doing the social media? I saw that. Uh, so I didn't get into TikTok because I thought it was like, okay, you had to have sick dance moves to be good on TikTok, but you guys are killing. You've got like yeah. a huge following over there. And it's really cool how that happened. I mean, we were bored out of our minds in isolation. We didn't know what to do. We had Ben at home with us and we, we figured all we can do is like play music and record it and it'll be fun. And so that's how we hopped on TikTok and it, within two weeks, like the followers were there. It was amazing. It was so much fun and they were requesting songs and it ended up being like, okay, once a day we'll put out a song because it'll, it'll keep us happy and sane something and, to do and yeah, right? and it, yeah. Just, it, it was lots of fun i mean i i really think it's a ridiculous platform i don't like to spend much time on it at all but i do like to interact with our fans which is really what it's there for like i, I always comment when people like talk to us or hang out or you know if we're we're always there yeah in terms of the, of like responding to people and i, I love that I and think it's the same. I do the same on Facebook and like Instagram. I really love that interaction. Now that we have nothing else, this is, this is what we got. This is our community and we want to keep in touch with them. It is. Um, TikTok yeah. is probably really taken off because of the pandemic and people are like, are, they're locked up and like going a little nuts. So there's some humor yeah. that comes out there, right? Because I see a lot of people. Yeah, who but are I mean, very you also funny. can't like press like the president of the United States going to ban this app, you know? Immediately, <laughs> yeah. everybody's going to go and download it, you know? <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> to, to, to think for a second that Donald Trump didn't get paid for that is ridiculous. It's you know? crazy. <laughs> yeah. It was part of our campaign. Like, we're doing a little campaign here, you know, <laughs> to promote our band. TikTok is doing a campaign, but they got Donald Trump in their pocket, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, when when things start to uh, has anybody in the vet in the band gotten a shot in the arm yet no not yet no one has yet no we're not it's not our 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 age, group. our age groups haven't popped up yet we're we're all we're all considering it and probably we'll uh we'll do it for you know when we can yeah, it's an interesting uh, question in in the music world because um, there's there's some you know strong feelings about it in in either ways. 
uh, for concert goers and uh, and for artists as well. So it's going to be, uh, I mean, interesting, I guess, to see how it all all rolls out as people are are so anxious to to get back and and see some live music. Um, well, absolutely, I mean, for sure. I have a you know, I have a feeling that that's gonna that'll be the way to get into the big shows again. That'll be the way that you know, as much as it's like a, a taboo to talk about these vaccination passports, but it seems to work. Places in the world that have done this are opening up. I see you know, family in other parts of the world are sitting at a restaurant and enjoying a meal together and having parties and I'm like oh my god yeah I, I really want that so <laughs> I saw I saw some photos a few weeks ago from New Zealand and there was a DJ that was performing there and it was packed because New yeah. Zealand uh, were just way ahead of it it's not it's not really a thing yeah. there now yeah, yeah there's no virus there yeah now it was it was someone who had come in from Europe so I don't know what the process was for them to get into the country or whatever maybe they had to go in and quarantine for two weeks but in any case, they played a show and there was a huge audience there. It's like, wow, this happened, you know, just just recently in the world somewhere. Um, yeah. So at, at some point, what I think is going to be great, though, is things start to come back a bit. And you guys play into this theory that I've had is that things will be kind of more local and regional because crossing borders and, and doing all that kind of stuff still seems, you know, as things start to open up, one of the things that will be further down the line. But yeah. You know, Ottawa to Montreal is a pretty short shot, and 100%. there's a lot of bands in Montreal. There's a lot of bands in Ottawa. There's a lot of bands in the areas that kind of surround all that, and it would be good to show those bands maybe a little bit more love because they'll be the ones who can go and play in venues in your city where you live. Yeah, we'll be there. Absolutely. Yeah, plus, I can visit my grandmother. It's perfect. <laughs> there you go. Is, does your grandma live in, in Ottawa then? In Gatineau. In Gatineau, over on the Gatineau side. Yeah, it's all the same. It's the same. Yeah, yeah or Elmer or whatever. Well, yeah. that area. Yeah, it, it, well, they were doing the spot checks on the bridge. I don't know what that situation is exactly right wow. now, but it's... Mm. It's just a weird world. With uh, with yeah. that with that in mind, I can't wait to hear more of of the record. Uh, now or nowhere, that's coming out tomorrow, and by the time this podcast will be out, it will have been out for a couple days. And um, yeah, it's it'll be great to hear some new rock and roll from the damn truth. Thank you guys so much for doing this. I can't wait to see you in person. Thanks so much, Daryl. Can't wait, man. It's gonna we'll we'll be there soon. Cannot right. wait. I'll be here too. <laughs> awesome, man.